New Jersey lawmakers are taking action on a series of new intended gun control laws. Some of these bills have already passed the General Assembly, which does not please Frank Fiamingo, president of the New Jersey Second Amendment Society. And he joins us now from the State House. Uh, welcome to the program. Good to have you on. Uh, what is it about this new round of, of intended gun safety or gun control laws that you find most objectionable? Well, Mike, first, thank you for inviting me. Um, the, the reason is that or we already uh, in New Jersey are one of the most restricted states uh, with regard to gun owner control laws. And uh, this new round of, of uh, legislation that was just uh, passed in the assembly really does not add any safety factors for the general public. All it really does or does it and, and doesn't really reduce crime. What it really does is it further restricts law abiding individuals who are not the problem. Do you understand the genesis of it, though? I mean, after the, the Connecticut school tragedy and after the, the series of events we've seen, there was, I guess, on the part of the, many in the public, a sense that something needed to be done when it came to guns and our society. Do you see mm -hmm. the connection, though, between those sentiments and, and the position that you hold? Absolutely, Mike. I'm a grandfather. I have two uh, beautiful granddaughters that are the same age as those children that were affected by the um, tragedy in, in uh, Newtown, uh, Connecticut. But the problem is, as much as I have an emotional reaction to something like that happening, I also um, can analyze what really took place. And, and, and so let's take a look at that. We have an individual who was uh, obviously out of touch with reality, who killed his own mother, and then proceeded to go to that school and slaughter children. This is not somebody who is a law-abiding legal gun owner. This is somebody who was mentally uh, imbalanced. And someone should have caught that and someone should have done something about it. Well, part of the argument is that that all may be well and true, but if mm -hmm. his mother did not have access to weapons that could fire as rapidly as the AR-15, that perhaps this certainly wouldn't have been, this kind of carnage could not have been done. Well, actually, the AR-15 is a fairly common rifle. I mean, it doesn't fire any r more rapidly than any other uh, commonly used rifle. Well, yeah, so you, it fires kind of, as fast as you can move, move your finger, obviously. It's, it's, uh, uh, right, yeah. and so do most handguns mm -hmm. and, you know, and, and so forth. But that's not even the argument. Uh, the, the, if, if that were the case, and if this is the, uh, the um, problem that the legislature would like to address, I'll back them up on that. I, I would be in favor of... Uh, legislation that might increase the penalties for not properly storing your firearms. Mm -hmm. That certainly would make sense, but do you see anything like that in the uh, list of bills that they proposed? Well, the, the magazine size uh, impact. I, you, you, most gun rights supporters that I've been hearing now uh, from the NRA and organizations uh, similar to yours are very much opposed to the idea of any limits on magazine sizes either, correct? Of course, because the reason for that is magazine size in the hands of a law-abiding gun owner is not the problem. If you could limit the, the magazine size of to one round or no rounds for the criminals, that would make a lot of sense. But restricting me or the people that are in my organization from having a 15-round magazine really doesn't make any sense whatsoever. What about the Internet sale of ammunition and the, the, uh, the exclusions for uh, Brady uh, Act? Uh, reporting requirements on gun shows? Uh, as far as the ammunition uh, is concerned, where you buy your ammunition or whether you do it face to face really isn't, again, isn't the issue. The, uh, someone who is a criminal is going to get their hands on both firearms and ammunition, and they're not doing it legally. They're not going to a gun store. More than likely, they're not ordering it online because that's tracked. You have to prove who you are. They don't just send you ammunition. You have to fax them a copy of your firearms identification card and some ID such as a license. In terms of, of your overall position, uh, when, when you read Second Amendment society, right to keep and bear arms, are you essentially mm -hmm. opposed to any sort or form of gun control at all? Uh, I would be uh, in support of any gun control that makes a clear distinction between the law-abiding individual and the criminal. And that's something that we have never done. Well, that's in kind of country. what we have right now, though, in, in the, the ban on convicted felons owning firearms, right? We do have that, and that works as well as it does. You know what I'm saying? If you're a convicted felon or if you've been adjudicated mentally incompetent, you cannot uh, legally 
possess a firearm in the state of New Jersey. So, Frank, only about um, 30 seconds left here. What do sure. you and your organization intend to do now about what appears to be not a rush to do something more about gun control, but certainly a concerted effort to do something more about that? What do you intend to do about that? We plan to do to continue to do what we've been doing, which is to meet with legislators and try to get them to understand our point of view that uh, you do not uh, affect crime by restricting law-abiding citizens. So hopefully we can work with them, give them some ideas about, for instance, uh, increasing the penalties for not properly securing firearms and other ideas that we have and uh, you know, uh, lead away from this punishing law-abiding citizens. Frank Fiumingo, we appreciate you coming on, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I appreciate it.